think of your first few jobs as really an extension of schooling. You want to still be in the job that's going to help you learn the most and position you the best and teach you the most to help you maximize your career later on. I'd like to talk for a minute about your career for a second and look into your entrepreneurial experience. So you have had a really long career in tech, uh, especially around healthcare, and then you started Postloop.ai. Do you think uh, for somebody who's getting into the healthcare space and maybe as an idea, maybe as uh, you know, an idea to bring an AI solution to the healthcare space, do you think uh, that starting a company means having already a pre-existing experience in this industry as long as the one that you have? The challenges are so huge in healthcare that there's a lot of opportunity for people with experience and without experience uh, to come in. There, there are so many things that are broken and so many possibilities. There's really a need to bring in new ideas. And so we need to have people who are less experienced. I think one thing we get out of my career is humility. The challenges in healthcare are not easy. Uh, the bar is very high. You're dealing with people's lives. So decisions are scrutinized very carefully. If you go in as an entrepreneur, you need to realize you're not the first person who thought they could revolutionize healthcare. Having been around, I've seen uh, a lot of very good attempts at trying to reform the healthcare system and what the issues are there. And I think that gives you some humility. Don't go in thinking you're going to change all of healthcare. It's, a, as you said, $4 trillion dollars. Uh, going into healthcare. But the good thing is you don't have to revolutionize all of healthcare to make a massive difference in a large number of people's lives. You actually started your career at the time where uh, we didn't talk about artificial intelligence. It's actually uh, quite a bit of time ago. It was not even machine learning. It was really maybe here and there, there were some applications of uh, data mining at that time. Uh, how do you stay relevant? Because now, instead, you are at the forefront of really applying artificial intelligence in, in, in healthcare. So how did you stay relevant uh, during your career? I try to stay relevant by, A, staying pretty hands-on. I'm a CTO, but I'm very involved in the technology, and I think staying close to the actual implementation is important. And, you know, just looking for the right sources to keep up to date with data. Even though I had 15 plus years of artificial intelligence and machine learning work, I did the Andrew Ng Coursera course. I took the fast AI course on deep learning when it came out. Those were very concise ways to kind of get caught up and refresh myself with the latest thinking. And especially if you understand these things and you have the prior skills in the area, those courses are not things that are that huge to do. You can go through and keep up with that stuff very easily. And so I think that's important. What has happened in the last few years in the United States, but I think around the world really, is that the value of data scientists has exponentially grown in the marketplace to the point that now every single university has a data science masterclass. And every single engineer that I know, at least here in Silicon Valley, is trying to resell themselves, getting a course online and resells them as a data scientist to make it thirty to $50,000 more. But the fact is, these jobs, uh, given now the huge mass of people that are getting into the field, I predict that this job will get commoditized. And so prices and salaries will go down at a certain point. How do they stay relevant? How do they keep their 40 k increase in salary? Or, or are they going to lose it? I think you'll see a divergence over time. Uh, some of those people will keep it and some will lose it. You're right, some portions of the job will get commoditized. Uh, I think if you look at the amount of work it took to build a deep neural net in 2012 versus 2015 versus 2018, it's significantly easier now than it was then because the tools have been commoditized. And so if your expertise is focused around the tools, watch out because those things are going to get commoditized. But Really, you know, what, what I view good data science as is really storytelling, being able to take data and make it relatable and impactable for people's decisions and being able to tell a story with that data that helps people make better decisions. Even though there's a lot of data scientists, I think doing that well is a skill that's not going to go out of style. And it's very simple to justify the prices for that, because if you can take data and apply it to a decision and make that decision better for a business, that's gonna turn into either cost savings or revenue or some kind of benefit for that business that's going to be a large sum of money. And if you can do things that save a business a large sum of money, it's not that hard to get paid well for doing that.
on our podcast, um, we also get a uh, lot of viewers from uh, really guys who are students in the universities. So we've seen, uh, I remember one, there was one episode where we got like an avalanche of, stu of students from Stanford uh, looking at this. And, and I think uh, what is the interest uh, there is uh, on top of their mind is getting a job. You know, like what do they do? I mean, they got all these degrees, they studied for years, they want to get the job. And what piece of advice can we give to them? In general, I think, one of the most important things you can do as a new graduate is really think of your first few jobs as really an extension of schooling. You want to still be in the job that's going to help you learn the most and position you the best and teach you the most uh, to help you maximize your career later on. A new graduate, it's really about getting the right thing and find the best opportunity to learn. Don't try to maximize the amount of money you're making right out of school because your long-term earning potential will go up much higher the more relevant your skills are and the better education you get after you get out of school. Let's say that we're talking to an engineer or a technical profile that is coming up out of school. Uh, one mistake not to make in the early stage of their career, what would that be? I ended up graduating early. I did college in three years. I was in a rush to get out and get into the working world and start making money. I basically skipped my fourth year of college and really that would have been a great opportunity for me to explore more, try different things, expand my skill set. There are a ton of things I could have done that I didn't do because I was so busy rushing through the process of getting school and not thinking about what I could get out of school. I was just thinking about how fast can I get a degree and then move on to the next phase. Uh, so I would tell, I would tell students, you're spending a lot of money to be in college. Enjoy it and, uh, and make sure you get the most out.